Hi, my name is Grant Kramer, and I'm Professor Emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the health effects of wine. Today will be part one on the positive effects of polyphenols and condensed tannins. The second part will deal with the negative effects of alcohol. Now, I know nobody likes to hear about that, but I think it's very important to see the scientific evidence and facts related to both issues. So let's start in the beginning when I first got interested in wine. There was a report by the CBS News program called 60 Minutes in which in 1991, they reported about something called the French paradox. What was that paradox? It was the fact that the French had a high fat diet, particularly butter, but had a low incidence of coronary heart disease. And there was a doctor, Dr. Renault, who was very interested in why this might be. Ultimately, he found an association with moderate red wine drinking, not white wine drinking, from about two to three glasses per day was associated with this lower incidence of coronary heart disease. Since that time, there have been hundreds of reports that have backed and supported this observation. So what are these benefits that red wine provides? Red wine is associated with certain reduced health risks. There are reduced effects of cardiovascular disease. There are reduced incidences of cancer and stroke and Alzheimer's disease and dementia and even type two diabetes. Also, there's an association with longevity and there have been many studies on resveratrol and its increase in the length of life, but that, that has been only studied in organisms such as the nematode or the mouse. Uh, those types of studies haven't been done on humans. However, I'm going to report on some scientific evidence that connects the drinking of red wine with longevity, as you'll see in a moment. Also note that alcohol is a known carcinogen. So despite the fact that alcohol is known to cause cancer, this red wine drinking has an effect that inhibits cancer in general. So what are the molecular components responsible for this effect? We think it's due to the 200 plus polyphenols that are found in red grapes. I'll go into more detail in a moment about what a polyphenol is. But in combined with the consumption of alcohol, which affects the absorption of those polyphenols into the bloodstream, they act as potent antioxidants. Grape juice does not have the same effect or taking a pill does not have the same effect. It turns out that these polyphenols need to be consumed with alcohol. Alcohol appears to improve the absorption of these polyphenols into the bloodstream. Therefore, the effects of green tea, coffee, or chocolate, which are other polyphenol plant products that are also associated with heart healthy effects, will not have as nearly as much effect. Another case in point is that it's not just a single polyphenol that is responsible for these effects. Resveratrol is probably the most popular one that has been studied. And in fact, there's a number of jokes out there on social media or, or even the TV on news about you need to drink a thousand glasses of wine a day in order to get enough resveratrol to have its effect. But there's clear evidence that just one to two glasses of red wine has an effect. So why is that? It's because there are synergistic effects of these mini polyphenols. I and mean, it's not just one compound that is doing it alone. Procyanidins appear to be the major contribution for these health effects. They are condensed tannins. And again, I will speak more about them and their structure in a moment. So here's a list of the important polyphenolics. First of all, there are anthocyanins. Anthocyanins are the red pigments in red or black grapes. They are not in white grapes, hence the importance of red wine. The red pigments are found in the skin of the grape. In some cases, 
in some unusual varieties, you can also find the red pigments in the flesh. Quercetin is another molecule, resveratrol, as I mentioned earlier, and the procyanidins or the condensed tannins. So polyphenols. Polyphenols are made up of multiple phenolic molecules. A phenol, by organic chemistry definition, is this six carbon molecule forming a ring with a hydroxyl on the end. So polyphenols are composed of multiple subunits of phenols linked together to make what we call a polyphenol. This is the molecular model for anthocyanidins, which are a sugarless component of the anthocyanins, which are the red pigments. So anthocyanins have a glucose molecule attached to the anthocyanidin. So what we see are the four major anthocyanidins in grapes. There are many other kinds of anthocyanidins in other plant species, but in grapes, we have these four. They are known as malvidin, cyanidin, pionidin, and petunidin. And each of these molecules is connected with different subgroups. So we have an R3 prime, an R4 prime, an R5 prime, which you can find up here on this molecule. And then you have an R3 prime and an R5, R6, R7, excuse me. And they are on this part of the molecule. And each one of these has a different group, the hydroxyl or methyl group or some other group attached to that, which defines that molecule. Here's an example of quercetin, resveratrol. And again, you see in quercetin, three rings, three, three ring structures with two hydroxyl groups on the outer rings here. And then in the case of resveratrol, it's slightly different. It's rather unique, has two rings with a couple hydroxyls on one of those rings. And then finally, we get to the more complicated molecule, the procyanidins. These molecules can be three subunits of this type of phenolic compound, or they can be multiple units up to maybe 20 or 30, we don't know because they're so large, we can't measure them in those large structures. We have to break them up in components. So they're very, very complicated structures. They have different attachments and they can even have side attachments here. These are the condensed tannins that I was referring to before. And they're found in the skins and in the seeds, different kinds in the skins and seeds. Okay, so you may ask, What's the evidence to support what you're saying, Grant? Let's start with this scientific paper published in Nature, one of the most prestigious scientific journals in the world. And the paper is a short communication from 2006 entitled Enology, Red Wine Procyanidins and Vascular Health. First of all, let me summarize by saying that they linked longevity of the people living in Gers region of Southwest France and in Nuoro, uh, a region in Sardinia, to the procyanidins in their red wines. One of the reasons for that is that they utilized Tanat, a grape variety that is very tannic uh, as a red wine and has the highest amounts of procyanidins of any grape or red wine, particularly in the way that they extract those procyanidins out of, into their wines. So what's the evidence here? I'm gonna get scientific here. Um, and what you're seeing are four figures that are the sum total of what's in this article. On the left-hand side up in A here, we see the polyphenol content related to some component down here called the ED50. Well, what is the ED50? In this case, it's a, it's a measure of the ability to inhibit endothelin-1. Endothelin-1, what is that? That's a peptide in your body that is a vasoconstrictor, which means it constricts your blood vessels. And as you increase this polyphenol content in the red wine, you see an increase in vasodilation. And, in, and this is specifically due to the inhibition of endothelin-1 synthesis. Down on B here, you see OPC, 
and that stands for oligomeric procyanidins. So these are the larger procyanidins that I was talking about before. So as you increase the concentration of the amount of oligomeric procyanidins in the red wine, you also see an, a decrease in the endothelium one synthesis, thus improving the impacts of red wine on your heart health because that vasoconstriction is associated with atherosclerosis, which is a heart disease, kind of vascular heart disease. On the right here now is very interesting. You're going to see the measurements in the populations of different regions of the world. And in the upper corner here, you're going to see the amount of endothelin-1 inhibition or endothelin-1 synthesis. And we can see that this country is in Australia drinking red wines, the EU in general, SA is for South America. This is for the United States. SD is for Sardinia in general. And Noir, NU or Noiro is for the certain part of, of Sardinia. And then finally, the Southwest France here. The EU can, did include all of France in its measurement. And again, what you can see down here is the logarithm of the OPC or the oligomer procyanidin. So you can see that there are much larger concentrations of these oligomeric procyanidins in the red wines, as well as this increase in endothelin one inhibition. And this is associated with a much higher longevity of particularly men over 75 in these regions of the world. So there's a link between human longevity and the consumption of red wine in particular related to the amount of condensed tannins in those red wines. In this article by Manolis et al. in 2019 in the journal Alcohol, they explore the effects of alcohol in general on cardiovascular disease. And one of the main themes that has come out of research over the years, not only for alcohol, but for red wine in particular, is this J-shaped curve. So on the y-axis here, we have the relative cardiovascular disease risk uh, with this line being number one for if you ab abstain from wine altogether and you are considered at low risk. By consuming one to two drinks a day of alcohol and definitions of a drink are listed up here, um, you can actually lower your risk of cardiovascular disease. However, once you go beyond the two drinks per day consumption, then that risk increases. This is a generally accepted model for the consumption of alcohol and red wine. And to support the arguments I'm making here, I'm going to show you a couple of citations, scientific publications, reviews that have summarized the literature up to this time so that this has been going on at least since 1991 and to the present time, there's still a general consensus, although it's controversial with some people, that red wine consumption improves cardiovascular health. And this article on red wine consumption and cardiovascular health in the journal Molecules, you can see it starts out with benefits from moderate alcohol consumption have been widely supported by the scientific literature in this line, red wine intake has been related to a lesser risk for coronary heart disease. And this more recent meta-analysis of wine, fine wine or sour grapes, a systematic review of and meta-analysis of the impact of red wine polyphenols on vascular health. You can see in the European Journal of Nutrition here in 2021, it says red wine polyphenols or RWP are plant-based molecules that have been extensively studied in relation to their protective effects on vascular health in both animals and humans. 48 animal and 37 human studies were included in data extraction 
following screening. Significant improvements in measures of blood pressure and vascular function following RWP or red wine polyphenols were seen in 84% and 100% of the animal studies respectively. Human studies indicated significant improvements in systolic blood pressure overall. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoy a glass of red wine today with a deeper appreciation of the health benefits it provides you. Have a great day.